We can, a little while. Yeah, I'm recording here. So OSC meeting, what is today's date? Friday, uh, May, May 8th. 8, uh, working on Steam Camp content. Uh, that's the main thrust. And also, like, really thinking a lot about the, you know, reading some of the articles about the economic collapse right now with about 10% job loss expected to reach like 20%. I think we can help help in that a little bit with uh, some of the work on the plastic recycling and 3D printer, printers in an immediate sense. I think there's definite potential for certain products as a way to get some people off back to their feet. So as we do the, you know, as we do the August event that we're planning for, I think that's definitely something to think about, and that's where the filament maker does make a lot of sense because you can talk about the waste stream being converted into meaningful product. I, I mean, at the very least, if we can develop viable filament production from the, the waste stream, that's, I mean, that could be a hundreds of jobs right there, potentially. Yeah. Uh, now, the bigger thing as I look at is, is hopefully that stimulates some interest in collaborative product development for people who have any freedom to not be so pressed by the economic downturn uh, and also get, get together to develop products like shoes gears mm -hmm. filament makers 3d printers torch tables so so for the the august event uh goal is to have the torch table up and running and cutting the blades for the 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 shredders but um so so definitely rethinking how much can we impact actual economic development and at that time there's still the idea of producing masks and ppe that's still a very live issue there's a lot of designs that have been created <coughs> sorry that uh, like right now from an initial spurt of design there's a lot of people now reviewing things where people uh, the at least the only good part of, of the COVID has been that a lot of effort has gone to a development that's open to some extent and we can build on that to see if we can produce some masks or ventilators where there is a number of open source ventilator pro projects uh joshua pierce is working on it too i mean everybody's working on it. you take a look at a lot of these uh university departments and other places they kind of diverted into these kinds of projects but at the same time the same thing pla plagues 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 most of them in that a lot of them are uh, look at this open source and at the end it's, it's, a, it's a snatch it's a grab it's a proprietary grab <laughs> where they they close it up just a standard thing of open source where people are all open source until there's a product and then it disappears so that that's still a live issue that we have to negotiate around and whatever efforts we get involved in of course we we select for the the true super cooperators that are fully open source in the way they handle the whole enterprise development towards distributive meaning that it's about economic benefit or plain use for everybody not just we're gonna use this as a chance to do a <laughs> do a do a land grab here which which i mean all, all kinds of conflicts are also in one way a transfer of wealth <coughs> from the many to the few and yes. we're we're trying to reverse that the historic transfer of transfer of wealth from the few to the many so we're still dealing that with that cultural baggage that while it's an opportunity that still has to be navigated it just as just as it, it it must be in a regular economy though that seems that there are some there's some more openness by a lot of people saying hey let's let's take this as an opportunity for all hands on deck as opposed to our selfish interests so let's see let's see where it goes but definitely with the the forthcoming steam camp we want to frame it with respect to okay here's printers here's filament making we can make real products like masks or ventilators uh, if by that time there's ones that are really proven and potentially some that are even open source and certified i mean that's mm. that's a unique opportunity that exists right now because um definitely design is being done and some people are pursuing certifications and some of them are being open so don't know if there's any product at this time but it's definitely moving forward in some way nice the um yeah i think you touched on a really interesting point the cultural shift cultural shifts are never easy to attain they require a lot of focus and a certain critical mass of people who can demonstrate the potentialities of the new emerging culture and at a certain point then a uh a shift occurs when a large portion of the population realizes the efficacy of the new approach 
mm-hmm. and we get a paradigm shift, a paradigm shift on a larger scale. Yeah, yeah. So, so the COVID situation is definitely fertile ground for such a shift happening because definitely everyone's rethinking like, how is our economy dysfunctional? You know, how can it be that? you know as one of the greatest countries really threatened by significant economic collapse at this point uh you know what institutions are in place that prevent that from happening how are we going about sustainable production or distributed production or local supply chains and all of that we're we're kind of noticing some gaps and definitely a lot of people are paying attention to that Uh, the um I think there's quite a massive scale on the global economic question as there are 6 billion people and there are so many uh, sectors of the economy that need to be simultaneously reworked. So some of the thought that I've been putting into my own work is uh, from the lens of education, how can we create large numbers of people who have the skills to do the research and the uh, commitment to a free, not free, a a, a prosperous civilization with this balance of um, prosperity for all yeah. and to feel engaged in their economy and then to feel empowered to take on projects which have a local and global impact. So we see that there could be ventilators and PPE from one point of view, there can be computer programming, there can be creating uh, agricultural phenomenon or projects and it just goes on and on and on. So it's a massive sort of problem to consider when we uh, think about the globalize or the global village construction. <laughs> it is a lot to construct. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it just begs the question as to okay, how do we focus our efforts? And uh, it needs so many thousands of collaborators yeah. and somehow to yeah. self-organize. And and every time I come back to OSE, seems to be a framework for that to happen. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the outcomes that, you know, makes me think about OSC, like one of the outcomes for me is noticing that, okay, now we have this crisis, but we're not yet in a position to say, okay, now a thousand people and thousand of open source micro factories and research efforts, thousand clubs and chapters, let's get together and solve the, solve the ventilator next week, solve the vaccine uh, or mm. join that project or whatever, do massive uh, mass potential action projects where, where we can have a significant impact on solutions we don't have that so so part mm-hmm. of my work is okay let's let's keep working on a, some of the infrastructure that's necessary so that means some of the wiki infrastructure forums uh, collaborative design principles of uh, getting the equipment and the, the up and into the larger printers the filament making as a potentially wide widely distributed the filament making i think is is wide public appeal for the environmental and economic aspects and then there's the steam camps getting that as a refined package for for now for the remote uh, participation and all the elements that that could really make it happen that you get thousands of people collaborating rapidly and effectively to the exactly to that so Um, now, now just just to remind you remember the the instead of challenge part on a cordless drill not sure if that's still happening in september still working on it and i mean part of this filament maker work and larger printers is for that but uh given that some of the people involved like you know with the virus things went out of control um not sure how that's going to happen but that was the experiment where we're going to say okay can a thousand people collaborate super effectively using part libraries freecad and basic protocols that are scalable and, and actually contribute to a, a real product in record time as a, as a real economic case uh, with the idea that there's like 50 to 100 businesses that start manufacturing this cordless drill at the end of the day. So that was the, the main proof we were aiming at. We'll see how far we can get on it, but basically it's that level. Right now we need, okay, here's a mass effort that can be spawned for the public interest that generates massive amounts of transfer of wealth from the few to the many um yeah so that's the the opportunity we have at hand excellent uh, but I maybe that, yeah um at this time in history there the few have accumulated so much wealth that their souls prompt them to somehow more productively engage with humanity and they may be willing to at some point uh sponsor such uh balancing balancing the, acts yeah uh-huh. I think a lot of people arise spontaneously to do that when they realize to what extent they are out of balance. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So maybe we could shift to some of the tactical things. So, so one of the things we are, we're planning on is the remote steam camps, and we've got the curriculum. So maybe just spend sure. spend this meeting on. Since Andreas is not here, I don't see anybody else uh, and seeing what we can do. So let's take a look at. So, so the Andreas basically took on the work of coordinating all the and updating all the curriculum and streamlining it to a really tight package. The idea was that. Uh, before the steam camp we would have at least some recordings and some high quality lessons that are like one hour super tight well scripted things that we can put also on uh, uh, massive online curriculum sites like Coursera or whatever uh, so, so we're looking at really streamlining it to a, to a high quality product with the filament maker as being the actual project day so still like if we do the nine day it would be four days of boot camp on all the essential skills and then five days of the project, which would be the filament maker. And, and here, the way to make it super low cost accessible was the idea of using the 3D printed gear downs to drive the thing through a regular uh, corded drill, which has got like 500 watts of power, so that you're totally uh, using, <coughs> probably wouldn't even include that in a kit. It's something, okay, just grab a drill from your basement or get one at the store. So our our effort would be to say, okay, let's make sure we have the interface design where you can couple any kind of drill to make this thing work effectively, a little bit more slowly, because typically you might need like two kilowatts for like the industry standards, at least two kilowatts, but here like say with 500 watts or even less, 300 watts, you can do a slower, but still very high torque kind of a shredder uh, on the yeah. shredder side. So let's take a look at, um, uh, go to Andreas log yeah i'm there and let's let's see what we can pick out from the latest um as far as the so he's taking a one hour module yeah step by step guide um yeah so we do have some guidelines there now he started doing something for keycad uh oh yeah actually getting that as as an instructional and we wanted to do for the keycad we wanted to do the uh, basically the the small minimalist arduino thing now let's look at the um yeah i think the document the, this document on thursday friday april 23 24. let me share my screen maybe with you so you can take a look at where i'm at sure. so this april 23rd This one, wait, let's see. Yeah, the one, the mix, the basically the curriculum mix there. We're trying to refine that as much as we can. Um, let me paste that so you you can also look at it as I show you. So it's pasted um, on a chat. Yeah, so this is... So I, I see it there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had it on the page. I, we're on the same page. It's yeah, <laughs> yep. we're on the same page, literally. Okay, so I'm going to go into edit. Um, by the way, I was just reading an article um, studying like regenerative business models that are distributed. Did you know that growing power shut down about two years ago? Which power? Growing power. Did, have you heard of them? No. Oh, you haven't heard of growing power? Well, growing power is per perhaps the w most well-known urban gardening operation. It's out of Milwaukee. I, I'm. Was, I, knew I was in Milwaukee. I would have guessed Detroit. Yeah, yeah. Because I heard about a few projects like very, that very inspired i mean that's actually what inspired a lot of my initial interest in the worms and aquaponics so you can say that guy has a lasting mm -hmm. legacy and uh, he was also awarded a uh, macarthur genius grant but they shut down troubles like actually the article that uh cited was kind of like lack of collab collaboration and kind of like uh sounds like you couldn't build a team and or give up control stuff like that and they went in dead and they Went it's a cultural issue, isn't it? Yeah. We are holding on to the old ways, and we fund and operate businesses within an environment which is uh, firmly linked to the old paradigm. Yeah, yeah. Like re reading those, um, reading that article. Actually, you can look at it on uh, on the wiki under uh, Growing Power. But it's like I could read throughout. It's like oh, well, you know, trouble with investors and this and that. Kind of like the standard like business nonsense that. I'm very careful to navigate away from, you know, and only work yeah. with the super cooperators that are actually interested in the vision rather than selfishness. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's interesting. 
But anyway, beyond that, and that saves you in the long run. It's like a, oh, a yeah. temptation in the short run to finance on yeah, the high yeah. road, but yeah, then yeah. whoa, then you fall off a cliff. You kind of <laughs> fall into the conflicts of interest. Like the, you got to be very careful about the of the investment model like for us it's about stakeholder investors i really do not like the idea of the external investor who's just putting in money and basically further concentrating wealth without really participating in, a, in an effort i mean that's I, I to me that's the current funding models are part of structural evil that we gotta transition beyond everyone's arm's length they don't have a genuine interest in what's happening as long as the funds are flowing that's a problem it's, it's a, an issue yeah so let's take a look at um okay let's let's look at uh the workshop um we were discussing two i like one is the full nine day and the second option was like a four day where we go through like rather than nine days i mean four days is a much lesser probably lower cost kind of endeavor so mm. i think i think both are viable like like what i could see working is for example, the four day where we insert the <laughs> filament maker and shredder in there, uh, probably build out the, or even or even like spend the four days like doing minimal building, some building. Like a, no, you gotta you gotta do the hands on like half the time, but then leave the fact that okay now we started you on all these processes. Here's the theory. Here's the practice. Uh, we go through as much hands on, but then we have like a week or two or a month to to actually build out and complete all the builds so that we meet again in like a month and then we're actually ready to crank and get data and collaborate further so something to that effect but it would still have to have the basic collaborative literacy like 3d printing nice free cat design so, yep build of the 3d when, printer yep just a question so you're uh, you're talking before about kits yeah so say we have a new participant we're going to send a kit for this nine day um they're going to build a filament extruder so we just have all of the components of the filament extruder in there and then they're going to build it is that how it's, you're thinking yeah yeah i mean not all because to all of them i mean it'll be too much money but but most of it like they would provide the corded drill we would provide the vitamins like okay here's the gear downs here's the blades um mm. probably the bearings and that what i envision there is a lot of 3d printed parts since we assume that we can do that inexpensively by that time um, CNC cut parts with a torch table here, so we have low cost to, way to cut the blades, half inch blades. And then people would provide like the corded drill. I would like to see just solid two by four lumber structure for very low cost design that's actually pretty robust. You have to do the proper heat isolation, that's not a problem. We make our own nichrome heaters, that's a lesson in itself. Um, or you can use a yeah, keyboard. Yeah, he's using vacuum. Oh yeah, that's well, better. Oh, we perfected that. I, I just put up a video on how you spin uh, like 13 feet of nichrome wire into a four foot core, like a nice little wound core. Like we're doing uh, all the open source heated beds right now. So the late, the one in a uh, in a D3D uh, Pro three, that's using 1800 watts of heated bed, and that's three three of the oh. heated elements. So that's awesome stuff um, but what I envision is giving primarily the vitamins because if we don't I mean it's gonna be like two thousand bucks in materials or whatever yes. like we got to keep the cost low so you're you're doing um, something that is still we cannot give up the industrial productivity on a small scale now can we yeah right <laughs> so that's our favorite <laughs> phrase so it still has yes. to be like for example the half inch blades that's gonna be no joke industrial grinding um, then the heavy gear downs, what I envision is just pre 3D printing either planetary or standard gears. And we're talking about the corded drill, which already has some of those are gear down already. Uh, then really multiplying that force like 10x, uh, get really significant gear down uh, as opposed to buying, you know, like a $200 or $300 gearbox you're building one for like i mean in plastic if you get recycled plastic that neg negligible cost so have you also... kind of calculated the forces and the torques oh, yeah. required versus the plastic gear yeah, radius yeah. oh yeah 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 you gotta do about 12 inches of of the I mean, we're talking about heavy gears that are like at least one inch thick we're talking about some serious mass so like solid yeah. 
one inch thick, about 12 inch radius, if we're not using planetary, but just standard gears, just st standard two meshing gears. Now the other way to go is to do oh. rubber 3D printed belts, which is yes, a really good option be. too, which requires less material. It's got the good strength of the, you can get good gear downs from that. You can do multiple stages. So, so this is all to be done. This is uh, this is not done. It's, there's a lot of work there, and that's why I'm saying like, ideally we would this we're you know we're starting summer X and we're developing all of this with a large crew of people working in tandem. But sorry, we don't have it. So the only thing we could do right now is try to get a bunch of people to work on this together. But it's once again like a lot of people are kind of out of control. Uh, it's not not that easy to do it. So we can do what what we can. I'm certainly working on uh, larger printers. Um, and getting everything in place so so when i have the 18 inch and 12 inch printers we can actually print out those gears in in mass uh stuff like that nice. so we're talking about the super volcano nozzles with 20 pound per day extrusion rates so that's that's what i'm working on uh, yeah so you can you can print out a couple of them per day because these things are going to be like pretty industrial grade so <laughs> very large yeah um, but looking at that, so there's universal axis. Now, the other thing about the universal axis is uh, the learnings have been to go away from the clamps, uh, for the, at least for the workshops. You want to do monolithic pieces. So it's it's the mm -hmm. idler piece, the the carriage piece, and the uh, motor piece. They're one piece, not two piece. Because mm. then you nice. s save a lot of time on all the bolts and everything. So that's the oh, yeah, that's a huge amount. Huge, huge increase in, in um, build efficiency. Uh, we've got the universal controller tight, so that's pretty good. Um, so the first was basic, first day was basically to go th with everybody through the printer build with an easy to build kit, where the instructions are really nice and tight. And maybe like I don't know, like can you help something out on the, on the first day, like working on the instructions? I mean, w and actually like since your D three D. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've seen the D3D Pro on the wiki, but it's we did the 3D printed corner pieces now, which is what we're yes. going with. So, I noticed a uh, few changes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is, it's way easier and it, it's super solid and it doesn't require welding. So it's a definite nice. improvement. And the 3D printer workbench allows you to design a 3D printer of any size using the the same d3d pro configurations and with even multiple axes like you can do multiple z axes and stuff like that like uh, i i designed the last 3d printer in the 3d printer workbench so uh yeah it's awesome work but i mean the bottom line is okay uh can you help on any of this curriculum here there's film and extruder stuff there's free cad stuff but that we kind of have yeah, pretty tight um I mean, there's free cat yeah. lessons that we've. I mean, we have the lesson already that that the lessons that we have already, but we probably mm -hmm. might want to like streamline it down to a more integrated process. We do have a nice video from the the January Steam Camp on the free cat lesson, so nice. we can possibly even just refactor that, or maybe just even edit that out a little bit, or just record a new one. But but we need a nice. Um, kind of like final video that would go okay here's our curriculum on the basic OSE workflow for universal design just for a large scale process of design so perhaps to that lesson I think to the FreeCAD lesson itself you would want to introduce that with some of the workflow like okay here's how now we use the part libraries how nice. we generate 3d printing files how do we go through that whole workflow process and maybe a little bit on a dev template i don't know if, uh let me show you a screen and let me show you what sure. we've got the template the dev template so look at this so do a test page uh and edit so let me show you how e how we can generate a dev template so um dev template pipe zero equals williams project and and let, let's show you what it does. So this is what we want to teach people. That one line. Look what I did. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad, That's right? amazing. So, yes, that's really helpful because 
that keeps it all organized. That would have been hours of reorganization on someone else's part right. to get to that. So now we shifted the whole development, open source product development process from hours of setup to yeah. a five second single line. So we want to include this within a basic development protocol of how we do things with FreeCAD. And um, so here's, uh, you can take a look at that, you can play with that, but that's the, that's the, that's, look at the syntax there. And what happens here, just to inform you, when you edit this, this is what, ha you can still see this, but then you do subst, and it actually types it out for you. So now I save that, it looks the same still, but when you edit, it actually broke it down. It substituted nice. the actual code. So now you can actually change like the status of completion. Like if you got the concept, you can say 100%. You can either pass the completion as parameters, but now since we already wrote it out, you can't use the parameters anymore. So for example, like 100% on Williams project calculations right there. Uh, anyway, uh, that's really cool. The, the other page, let's see, did I, I put that into the... The other page is OSE development protocol. I mean, so, so and teach as much. Uh, you know, honestly, just try to sh share as much of this understanding of this. It's kind of a uh, a description of that. But in an initial video with FreeCAD, like here's how we collaborate. Here's how we do FreeCAD, and here's here's how we prototype to get 3D printed files out. If we can teach people that by the first day. Uh, that would be major success. So I just put that in into the chat box there. Um, so I'll copy these and I'll look into those yeah. as kind of homework. Yeah, but I think what um, the OSC plus part, so like if we start with an introduction, we can do like the general generic OSC thing. But here I would do instead of uh, that links to D3D simple, but we call it universal now because we can turn it from one head to multiple heads. So, but I would really replace it. Maybe we can still have the 3D printer intro, but before that is the collab intro. Here's how we collaborate. Um, but maybe, yeah, like, yeah. I think that's kind of like, we should, we should probably hit that like the first thing. So from the get go, people are getting ready. Okay, this is getting into collaborative mindset and where all these exercises that we're doing, um, collaration process. Um, that's the big thing. If we can the, get people collaborating yeah. in a world that is treating people with individualized tests. Yeah. That, yeah, so I'm that's gonna, the big shift. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna put that big green because that's that is like the linchpin for all this stuff that happens. And then when we go to the reflections, we can talk about that process. Um, put talk about everything with respect. So here I actually put reflections on each day so that we do that. Um trash art so we talked about chart here i don't know like i think more like products products yeah <laughs> talk about products yeah. well uh, there's an interesting thing you see that's the thing i found this in my own classes like say i get a few students who want to do 3d printing well the next year someone wants to do the filament extruder and then the next year someone wants to do robotics oh and then we even go up to art and so we have a challenge with that how do we satisfy everyone's interest? Because somewhere in there, hmm. trash art is great because it's open source and it's based on Blender and we're recycling something. Uh, but it's not the core of the OSC industrial base. Right. But in, it, at the same time, it's related to it and there are some people who will be interested in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. But I think we want really to keep clear on like when we're pitching this, this is look, there's the word economy here even. Economy implies yeah. that you have to have some products. Can't be yeah. a bunch of hippies running into the woods with um, Swiss army knives and polyethylene. Got to <laughs> have some production. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, um, hmm. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, this is recycling. I think, I mean, this has to get into like film and blends. Um, into yeah, there's school. chemistry. There's serious, amazing things to be discovered and implemented there. Yeah. I mean, film and blends because you could do stuff like, oh, now you mix some sawdust in there and you got this wood wood flavored filament or whatever. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do there. But I think the missing link is the significant product. Like, like who's making uh, filament from trash right now? I don't know of anybody right now who's selling filament from trash. So if if we focus on okay, let's solve that problem because nobody did. Precious plastic certainly didn't because they don't even do 3D printers. Uh, and precious plastic would be one that's like the most likely candidate, but so far nobody's really uh, cr cracking. Down. I have a friend. Th there is a friend I have here in Canada who's very close to commercializing a hemp-based solution or marijuana-based solution. It is Canada, and there's a lot of extra marijuana. Sort of, uh, ninety percent of the plant is not used in the production process. So what to do with that? Well, they're making a uh, bioplastic out of it. How do you do that? Is that proprietary? Uh, a little chemistry. But right now, he's proprietary, but it just shows that there is uh, a lot out there that can be done. Are you saying that you're uh, using that as the feedstock for the carbon, for the car carbohydrates? Or? Yeah. And throw a little acid, a few other little things in there, mix it up, centrifuge, and they have a case for a uh, commercial scale bioplastic, which is now. So, are we funding. talking about now s plastics like cellophane? which is reformulated cellulose? Uh, I'm not exactly yeah, sure of the yeah. chemistry for that. I've only just talked in passing a few yeah. times. Well, I mean, yeah. unless it's open source, we can't, you know, there's not much we can learn from it. because there... No, but I, I'm thinking that it, there is a lot of work that can be done in terms of discovering these things because chemistry is not a naturally proprietary. Right. <laughs> chemistry is open to the universe. Yeah. But... Um, more like okay here we have plastics already so I mean that's kind of beyond the scope of uh, a four day thing like this we can definitely like that that I would see as more like phase two where once there's people actually doing this and supporting themselves doing some product production like making filament or something that yes. we want to hit the economic impact not like at this point not, not get into a lengthy R&D thing there's already solutions that we can use right now to like like for example, making filament from existing waste so, plastic. Uh, another uh, angle, and this is also from my background, I'm naturally thinking of this through the lens as a teacher. Mm. I desire not to implement government curricula. This seems like an excellent curriculum. The bootstrap a new civilization curriculum. And we gradually build within a population the capability to be economically viable. So we're, so, we're starting with <clears throat> I was going to say, because that was the initial, like, the idea of the global classroom, right? The idea that we get people yeah. like you, like, the, the kind of the derivative of the OSC clubs, which I'm thinking more right now along the lines of here's OSC chapters where we're actually training people to build the 3D printers. A very, very rigorous course. Here's the economic model. Train people to do that and actually start full time. Like, I'm talking full time. People who actually want to transition into this. Um, operations in different places but short of that for high schools and schools you can do the the chapters or or the global classrooms where can we right now say to a bunch of teachers okay let's try this experiment let's take your science class and actually all got get on a conference call together and do this collaborative design you think we can uh, yeah that kind of thing I would love to do that. And because there are now opportunities, like typical teachers are not willing to do this sort of thing because the curriculum is so onerous to implement. The government has always got you doing paperwork. And so there are many, many people who are interested in this stuff, though. So let's work with some interested people who are not necessarily trained, or trained teachers and get going uh, with groups of students to uh, collaborate internationally and work with this well do you see a practical avenue into this so can we actually say okay let's let's invite a number of teachers so so prepare some concept you know some concept and here's the basic concept being you have a class if you are willing to commit that class maybe maybe start like okay one science class or one 
one math or STEM or programming or design class or art class and we say, okay, we're all, all of us going to work on the same project. So we actually yes. see amazing velocity happen. That's it. And uh, I can think just through my local context, a few youth who are university age, they're taking math or science or computers. They're interested in the betterment of the world. And they're the kinds of people who become excellent teachers at this. A trained teacher has for years been trained to suppress human curiosity for the sake of check marks in boxes. Mm -hmm. And so, how do you negotiate in a game yourself? Like you st still have to do that? You kind of... I I work, I found ways to be very efficient at it, copy and paste, and just get that out of the way and do as little uh, paperwork as is humanly possible and use as many copy and paste so that I'm spending my time doing education, not paperwork. Mm -hmm. And I also work at a small international private school. We're very good at passing the inspections and we just practiced at it for many years. So I just minimize that time so that, well, it's a sort of a moral consideration. As a teacher, I'm morally obligated to educate my students, not to paperwork my students. Wow. So moral obligation. I love that. That's really good. Um, so talking about the, the concept of this mass collaborative, because that's something like if, for example, during the STEAM camp, we can leverage a few sessions of mass collaborative development like that, that would add a huge value to it. Because that would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe like into the curriculum, put in like an hour, like, or maybe even after hours, like whatever, but the hour of power. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Marching gets up on the stage. He's got his microphone. Are you with me? Do we have <laughs> <laughs> the hour of power. Um, so wow. I can see another career coming out for you right away. Well, I'm still yet to to go into my political <laughs> career after the the government the no no after no the, I was thinking a religious career there's a lot of those available in the United States what kind <laughs> the religious career well the religious the career pageants. well first Sunday morning okay pageants. well the pro natural progression is uh, first we got to solve the economy by 2028 then I take to the pulpit both in politics and religion <laughs> <laughs> excellent <laughs> well right. you've got it the power has got to be the name that's okay. it but okay so say we do, do it, like what so so you mentioned some of these uh, individuals that are community leaders that can lead such groups so so what channel what outlet do we have for them to operate to because i was thinking like if there's a class you can enlist a teacher to say okay yeah i'll do that that'll be interesting now you have the challenge of coordinating the timing like it has to be the right time so maybe that's a technical huge hugely technical op obstacle but I don't know but do you have ideas of how that could be executed well right now we're building a global network of interested students and we're doing this little Python course and trying to do a fast forward to this high school curriculum in math and science using Python so that already has about 10 countries worth of people involved so imagine we uh, built on that network and invited people now to collaborate over either free CAD or some kind of design challenge, uh, stepping along the lines to this mass collaboration uh, towards economically viable products. So we, uh, I'm just thinking from my own perspective, I'm sure there are thousands and thousands of people out there, especially right now, who are just looking for ways to productively engage their time. And that's the opportunity presented by this really very difficult crisis that has beset the world. Right. So is there an opportunity to focus this, say we do an event in August or even do some collaborative design sessions before that to practice? Um, I think practicing before this? then is really good. So what would it take to onboard all the participants so they're functional in some way? So I, it sounds like this crash course kind of like the stuff we're we're doing in this collaboration process information yeah, here that's let's, that's like the maybe we can try an open source collaboration onboarding mini course how can we collaborate how can we use github or gitlab how can we use google documents how can we commit to a project across many countries but it's one project and then how can we support each other and use 
project management tools and select a new task each day or each week and work towards a particular goal. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can experiment with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so do you have an email list of these individuals that are already engaged in this? I would love this or? Um, well, there are students who are currently 13 to 17 years old and they're interested in Python and mathematics so far. But I think we can start networking through various channels to gather people who are interested. I have several youth in the community here who would definitely be interested in uh, acting as facilitators of such processes. We could start with them in a class and train the trainers kind of thing and let them run other classes for youth. Mm -hmm. So a few thoughts there. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe we can just have an OSE onboarding course of some sort to get collaborative literacy out there into the masses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Including myself, because I have to continuously battle against this tendency to work alone because I grew up in the countryside and just trees were my friends. So that's... <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't usually talk back <laughs> right. or have opinions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As far as... Um... Let's see. So what what do you think you can help with the curriculum? Um, well, such an onboarding course, introductory introduction to Python, FreeCAD, um, and then uh, collaboration, things like this. A lot of things that we build up in my own classes, but in the context of OSE. And then uh, perhaps um, having the students then engage in a practical design of, say, the um, improvements to the uh, shredder or to build the shredder or something like that. Let's do, look, why don't we do this? Why don't we do the hour of power is about getting <clears throat> viable filament from trash. That's completely longer. Okay. Uh, so viable filament from trash. Okay. There's a, the design goal. Let's get some trash working for us again. Mm -hmm. And that's completely along our path of okay now you get into actual construction materials because now we have low cost access to filament it's within the yeah. realm of the incentive challenge where the cordless drill is going to be made from trash so this is this has to happen and the more people working on it the better good okay so that'll be the sort of integrating concept and then we try to get groups to see the bigger vision that that would be just one step in a much bigger uh, economy that would be unfolded through collaboration. Mm -hmm. Yep, that leads directly to the uh, the CNC torch tables and tractors because you build those by printing parts. Like I want to do rubber tracks and rubber and gear downs for the tractor. Like nice. we're talking about like five inch thick. Uh, talking about five inch thick, about twelve inches or so, or maybe minimum eight inches. That can handle like fifty thousand pounds of drive force. So wow. we're talking about, and that's that's doable because if you talk about PSI of plastic, it's 5,000 per square inch. So as long as you wow. have a contact of a few teeth and a hmm. gear that's like five, in, and five inches is actually quite doable that we can print. Yeah, you've got like industrial grade tractor drive that's 3D printed that. with uh, 3D printed tracks. So that's, that's basically where I'm heading. But basically we, at all times, we have to keep the clear connection to the industrial productivity on a small scale, as, as we love. So, mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really exciting. So those are some things. Maybe uh, I think it would be good to take these now, reflect on them, mm -hmm. I'll look into the websites uh, or links you posted, mm -hmm. and then come up with a better formulated response to how can we collaborate on this based on some more research and reflection. How is that? Yep. Yep. Let's do that. Let's Great. Do that. So let's let's do that and let's let's share any documents. Maybe like we can start a curriculum document. Take a look at the curriculum format and see if we can start a document. Just uh, that piece right here, which we inserted because Andreas was not looking. Mini clips. Okay. And, yeah. That's great. I'm just going to uh, put that in my log in the moment. A little. I don't know if there's not there's not a page for that at the moment, is there? Open source collaboration no. mini course. Okay. No, I'll just maybe make not. One. Look at Andreas' log for the the latest on that. Okay. Okay. So so let's keep in touch and take it from here. Okay. okay. Sounds great. So perhaps next Friday we can check in. 
Yeah, so these meetings, the Friday 2 p.m. is a regular team meeting, so join in. Good. Well, from now till uh, at least the end of June, my Fridays at 3 are free. So. Okay. Which is Friday at 2 for you. So that's good. Okay, 2 p.m. Central. Okay, okay, William, so thank you, and we'll be in touch. Very good to see you again, Martin, and say hi to Katrina. We'll see you soon. Okay, take care. Bye.